This is me. This is my beautiful wife, Sylvia. And this is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing. And my hope to do a retirement project in 2029, circumnavigating the globe. This is Sylvia's response right now. I'm on a six-year quest to convince Sylvia this is a great idea and the clock is ticking down. So join me as I search for the perfect boat she will love and get all the ladies to subscribe and cheer her on. Welcome back to another episode of Naval Gazing at Camp David and a special series on future yachts, yachts that have not yet had hull number one launched, but have their renders out so that we can have a quick peek into the near future. Our future yacht today is the expected and highly anticipated refresh of the standard by which other performance cruisers are measured. We are, of course, talking about the new Outremer 52. Riley from La Vagabond recently commented that I need to take care to let the audience know that I'm not being paid or sponsored by the manufacturers of the yachts or the equipment that I discuss here. This is especially relevant in this week's review because over the course of developing this channel, I have fallen hopelessly in love with all things Outremer and the 52 just takes that to a whole new level of obs obsession and admiration. And this is coming from a guy who loves athwartship berths, sky lounges, and dinghy lift swing plat swim platforms. So, as a warning, here is the view from my desk and the motivation to keep me driving forward to retirement. That all said, and you duly alerted to my predilections, today we are going to review the 52 specifications, pricing and layout against three similar new vessels, do a full tour asking what would Sylvia say, have a look at the pre-owned market for three to five year old comparables, and finally, we're gonna give it a Dave score and compare it to all the other yachts we've looked at so far. Looking at the outside of all the three yachts now lined up side by side, you can see the similarities that they've achieved here on the brand new 52. It really is beautiful. Um, looking at the profile, it, it just looks like a, a slightly smaller 55 with some specific benefits. Um, one of the things that I'd like to point out, and I'm not sure if it's shown here, but you can literally have your cake and eat it too. So you've got the Versa helm that comes up and down, giving you protection from the elements or wind in your hair. But instead of two of them, like you have on the 55, you've got a reversion back to the fabulous molded Outremer seat on the opposite hull with a tiller. So you've got something even better than the 55. You've got a beautiful Versa helm and the tiller seat that the Outremer is so f uh, famous for. And again, that episode in one of Riley's videos where he's sitting there, hand on the tiller, looking into the sunshine and saying everybody in their lifetime should have this view just once. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Now, as we uh, look onto the specifications, we're comparing this with a Portofino 47, uh, which is not launched yet, the Balance 482, which is, the Outremer 52, which is not launched yet, the Katana Ocean Class 50, which is just launched, and the new Neil 52, which is not launched just yet. Looking at the sail areas, the Neil 52 rocks it with 166 square meters. Uh, the next is going to be the Katana at 154. The next would be tied between the Balance and the Portofino 47 with Outremer at 
Heading now down onto the cabin top, uh, you can see uh, the Outremer and just quite how slim it looks. Now, I could not get a line drawing uh, of the cabin top, but I got you as close as I could with a, a top-down shot here. Um, very similar in, in dimension to the uh, Balance uh, 482, although you have a much larger nets out front, uh, which probably reduces your weight substantially. Um, now let's move on into the actual saloon itself. The uh, Outremer 52 has a palatial uh, saloon. Look at the width of it compared to everybody else other than the Neil 52. Uh, so incredible width, um, a little shallower depth I would say than the Balance 482, uh, but you don't feel it. Uh, when I was on the 55, I was stunned at the sense of space. And, uh, whether it's the shapes, the shades of colors, the way they do things, it just feels spacious. Uh, and I'm anticipating the 52 to be no different. Uh, Portofino, uh, much narrower and longer, uh, but it has that front access to the, uh, to, to the front cockpit, which I really do like. Uh, Catan Ocean Class, massive, cock, uh, massive saloon area because they've taken a page out of Bali, although executed in a much nicer way with the sliding doors. The Neil 52, of course, absolutely monstrous in space, even with the owner's cabin on the main floor. And they have a version of this, which we'll discuss in the future, that has the owner cabin down in the hall and opens the entire salon. Like, it, it's going to be epic. Uh, now, let's head down into the actual hulls. Uh, the Outremer, look at those slim hulls. Gosh, they're beautiful. Uh, almost as slim as the Neil 52 Amas. Uh, slimmer than the Ocean Class, slimmer than the, ba the Balance, and uh, significantly slimmer than the Portofino. Um, but what I do love, and we will discuss it extensively here, is that Outremer uh, really leading the charge with uh, the versatile four-peak cabin area uh, that they call MySpace. Um, and we'll get into that a lot. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I don't need three cabins on my vessel for a circumnav. I need my wife uh, and maybe one other couple. Uh, and if there's some kids, they can sleep upstairs uh, on the, on the drop-down table. Uh, uh, what I do need is a walk-in closet. I need an area for washer dryer. I need all of that versatility. And that's exactly what Outremer is starting to give you. Um, so let's head into the actual numbers themselves um, uh, with a, a, a wee peek here at the top line. The Portofino 47 uh, leads uh, the pricing at a six, uh, 8612. Uh, the Neil 52 uh, very close on its heels at 899. Uh, then you've got the Katana at 915 and the Outremer at uh, basically 1.1. The balance then is a 1.15. Um, all in all, a pretty tight grouping. Uh, and given the quality and reputation of Outremer, uh, uh, you know, that, that's pretty outstanding. Um, the Sail Away USD on these, uh, you're going to have the Portofino at uh, 1.3, Neil at 1.35, Catana at 1.37, the Outremer at 1.63 and the balance at 1.73. Uh, as we then look at the actual uh, uh, length uh, of the waterline, uh, you've got the um, Neil at 52, leading the pack. The Outremer is next at 51.5, followed by the uh, balance at uh, 48.2, um, uh, sorry, uh, followed by the uh, Catana at 49.1, the balance at 48.2 and the Portofino at 45. The a draft of the Outremer leads the pack at 1.07 meters. And the displacement, uh, you've got the Outremer tied for the lead with balance at 12.5 ton. Um, the uh, actual upwind sail area, again, we discussed. Uh, you've got the Neil at uh, 165, 166 and the Outremer is at uh, 155. Uh, so the um, fuel tanks, as we look at those, um, you've got basically Katana in the lead at 800 each. 
Um, the Utramir is very modest at 333 and 379 fuel and fresh water, respectively. Heading to the next segment, hull construction. Uh, Katana appears to lead the pack with e-glass and carbon fiber and toir and cloth reinforcement. That's like a Kevlar. Vinyl ester form core. Uh, Outremer is solid polyester laminate beneath the waterline, so it's a solid hull for additional um, uh, uh, resistance with a vinyl ester outer layer. Hulls and decks are polyester with a uh, divini cell foam core and certain components reinforced with carbon. Now, I've heard criticism over Outremer's use of uh, polyester. Uh, however, I heard an outstanding explanation from this, for this from some of their engineers. The bottom line is, if you're a live aboard, uh, cruising the world, and anything happens, you need to be able to repair it in situ or at some local small marina. They can do that with polyester. They can't do that with carbon fiber. They probably can't do it with uh, epoxy. And it's doubtful they can do it with vinyl ester because of the heat tolerances involved. So as uh, our friends at the, uh, the Admiralty show said, cheap and cheerful is the way to go if you actually want a practical world circumnavigation vessel. Um, as we look then to the actual uh, performance indicators, the Neil is spectacular. It, it, there's no other way to put it. The sail area to displacement on the Neil is 33.25. Now, Catan, the, the Outremer, remember this is a, a catamaran versus a trimaran, is at 31.23. That's an outstanding uh, score and, and puts it in the area of extreme racing boats. The uh, next one to it is the Catana Ocean 50 at 2809, followed by the Balance 42 at 268, and the Portofino 47. Given it's aluminum, given it's shorter, given it's a uh, much more comfort-oriented cruiser, a very respectable 23.29. As we look at uh, heaviness or displacement to hull length, here again, its lowest score wins, like in golf, we have a winner with the Neil 52 at 80.01. But the Outremer 52 is at 81.71, right next to it. Then you've got the balance at 99.3, followed by the Catan at 108.84, and this is where the Portofino lags behind at 162.16. The Bruce number, again, Neil leads with 145, but right on its heels, you've got the, the Outremer at 1.4, then the Catana and Balance basically tied at 1.3, followed by the Portofino at 1.21. Hopping on board, what would Sylvia say? Well, I think Sylvia would really like this yacht. Uh, Outremer has done an absolutely outstanding job in refreshing the iconic 51. Look at the uh, nice uh, lounge cushions you have on the forward deck. Uh, this uh, aft area, now I'd like just to call your attention to the tiller here. You literally have your cake and eat it too. On the other side, which we'll look shortly at, you've got the Versa Helm. On this side, although this render doesn't show it, you have the option to the iconic single Outremer aft seat and a tiller. So you have literally the best of both worlds, fun and practicality. It's absolutely incredible. Not even the 55 has this. Looking into the cockpit itself, it's uh, a little different uh, than the 55. You've got uh, some closed off area on the starboard and an open area on the port, making control of animals and small children much easier. Look at the way those doors open completely up into a fabulous open saloon. Uh, I mean, the saloon is so spacious in the way that table turns into a coffee table, turns into a full dining table, turns into a bed. I mean, uh, they have created so much spatial sense in this area, whether it's the curves. I'm not sure exactly what it is. The forward-facing nav, and I don't like forward-facing navs, is outstanding. And look at the way the windows open completely up in the forward area, giving incredible ventilation right through out the back of those open, beautiful uh, uh, cockpit doors. Heading back then into the cockpit itself, you can see the cockpit table as well. 
uh, is incredibly versatile, opening up into a full dining table, shutting down into a small coffee table, and then turning into a fantastic uh, day bed. Now, the Versa Helm here, I'd like to bring your attention to it. it, it it's more than just a Versa Helm. I, I, Outremer has done artistic elements to this yacht, not just practical elements. The way that beautiful Helm Station dashboard is a part of the curve, the way uh, all of your lines run to those winches that are absolutely in easy reach, the way that the Versa Helm slides all the way into the cockpit with a retractable roof so that you have cover, or up into a vertical with a, a stand-up backrest and all of your instrumentation and drive uh, controls right there at your left hand. I mean, you're at maximum height, maximum visibility, maximum sense of control when you need to be. Or it slides all the way over to the uh, starboard side so that you can relax in the elongated chair there Drive with your feet if you want to. Drive in the arms of your loved one if you want to. And if you really want fun, head over to Riley's chair on, on, the, on the port side there. Sit there with that tiller in hand, looking into the sunset and saying everybody in their lifetime should have this view just once. So, I mean, they've absolutely done an exceptional job here. So again, I, I love that backrest that they uh, created in the, um, in the 55. Looking down the side of the hull, you've got those fabulous dagger boards um, and you've got a tremendously shallow draft when you need it. Uh, now, let's have a look at Outremer's fantastic innovation, the MySpace area here. This is something that it was needed for a long time. I don't need uh, three cabins. I don't need four cabins. I need two good cabins with massive storage for my wife's clothes and my tuxedos for those fabulous uh, Monaco uh, casino nights. Uh, that's the imaginary lifestyle, is it not? Look at what you can do with this MySpace area. Uh, you, you've got offices, you've got storage, you've got convertible bunks, day beds, you've got uh, uh, desk space um, with bunks, you've got kids space, you've got um, uh, laundry space if you want it. Uh, it, it. There's absolutely no end to what they've done with this. I think they've done an absolutely outstanding job at versatility here, and you can choose what you want. Here's your laundry if you want it as such. Of course, a dressing room if you want it as such. This is, this is what every yacht needs. It does not need another freaking berth. Um, so I hope, and, and I, I do see this happening in so many of the new yachts, and I applaud the designers because as we move away from uh, catamarans only being for charter and into catamarans being for private use and circumnavigation and live aboard, this is exactly what you need. Uh, here is your aft uh, owner suite, uh, really comfortable. I'd love a walk around, but I'd live with it on, on this vessel. I just love it so much. The, the various, they've given you a selection of shades and colors, which I think is absolutely outstanding. You're not seeing that so much. Um, and your, your area here under your, uh, your cockpit bimini is, is absolutely outstanding. So overall, I, I mean, I'm in love with this boat. I just think it's fantastic. Moving on to pre-owned comparables, our first yacht is an 019 Nautitech uh, 542. They're looking here at um, 1.450 versus 1.635 for the new Outremer 52. Now, this is a, a very nice boat. It's only three years old. Um, and it has a lot going for it. You have to get the right one. They're scarce as hen's teeth. Uh, but I would, I would consider this one, although there is so much about the Outremer uh, and the fact that Outremer hosts a around the world rally. Uh, and I don't know, I I'd probably go with the Outremer. Uh, moving on to the Katana 53, we've got an 019, three year old boat. We're looking at 1.633, almost exactly what the new Outremer 52 will cost sail away. 
without a doubt, I would go with Utremer. Uh, Utremer took over the lead spot from Katana a long time ago, and their fit and finish and their design and their aesthetics and their, just the art of their boats is just so much better. Uh, moving then to Anil 51, 018. So we're looking at about a four-year-old boat. You're looking at a million versus a million, 635. Um, if I have the bucks, I'd still do the Utremer. Uh, the, the 51 was a nice boat. Uh, I think the 52 is going to be an exceptional boat. Uh, they've corrected all the things from the 51. So I, I'd still take, I'd, I'd pay the 600 and go with the Utremer. Uh, looking at Nutramer 51, we're looking at 1.3 versus 1.635. Without a doubt, I would go with the brand new 52. And finally, 019 Exquisite X5. They're looking 1.5 versus 1.635. Sorry, the Utramer has it in a landslide. Now, to the preliminary Dave score. So looking at the Utramer 52 preliminary. Uh, Elegance, interior, eight, absolutely. Exterior, eight, absolutely, without a doubt. Um, the Portofino, honestly, uh, just because of some of the bias towards uh, Sylvia's condo environment, uh, it's up there, but, but um, for me, uh, uh, I, I, there's so much about the Utremer I love. I think the delta here that we're looking at on the total is exaggerated. Interior, um, as far as comfort goes, Utremer uh, 7 um, versus the 9 uh, on, the, on that Portofino, uh, I, mostly because your access to the front cockpit from the interior. Uh, exterior comfort, 7. Uh, you know, the, the Portofino has so many other areas, but again, I like what Utremer has done. For what they've done, I love it. Quality, nine. The Utremer quality is just outstanding. Performance, eight. Should be a nine, actually. Lazy Sailor, seven. Condo, seven. Could be higher, but it's a sailor sailboat uh, that appeals probably enough to my wife. So uh, you got to give up a little there. The Geek, it's a solid eight, if not higher. I love the Versa Helm. I love the uh, classic Outremer uh, port side chair with the tiller. Um, it, there's a lot to love here. Uh, the value for the money, a seven, if not an eight. I mean, it's, it is a really sound value for money. Bringing it to a 76 and a third from the top, but honestly, that is purely driven by your perspective of comfort versus performance. This could easily top out above both of the others, in my opinion. And that wraps up our future look at the new Outremer 52. I hope you've enjoyed it. I absolutely love this yacht. I think it is an incredible balance and really their decision is purely going to be one of certain nuances of taste, but I could go for this one in a heartbeat. They've done an absolutely extraordinary job. Have a great week and we'll see you back here next week.